Today's processional gospel comes from the New Testament book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Here ends the reading. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant that we may follow him in the way of the cross, and that dying and rising with him, he may enter into your kingdom. Yeah. 
Our first reading is a reading from Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught, the Lord God has opened my ear. And I will not rebellious, I did not turn backward, I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Today's reading is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. 
Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your faith shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Here ends the reading. Our second reading is Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And he said to his disciples, 
Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, is it possible? Let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to, prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? 
Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field, as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what has been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the tree chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered, gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, 
and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, yet he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lemi, Sabakan, Tani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and set it and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the new rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive, 
After three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May Almighty God bless my words and give you, the beloved children of God, radical insight into what we just listened to, the passion of the Christ. Amen. We have finally arrived with Jesus to Jerusalem, that sacred city he has had his sights on throughout his entire ministry. Today is the day when the Messiah will triumphantly arrive in Jerusalem and finally save God's chosen people, the people Israel. But alas, what kind of pompous parade does this Son of God have? The Messiah is seen riding on a lowly donkey. This is how Christ ushers in the kingdom of God, and it is nothing compared to the kingdom of humanity. For you see, one can imagine on the same day, on the western side of the city, another triumphant entry. Pontius Pilate, the representative of the powerful Caesar to the Judean state of the Roman Empire, parading in full pomp and circumstance, with military procession, beating drums, and big, beautiful stallion horses. Pilate would have been coming from the grand governor's residence in Caesarea on the sea to be present during the chaotic and often dangerous Passover festival. Pilate would not have been there to celebrate with the Jews, but rather to make sure that they did not start any uprisings in honor of their liberation holiday. Instead of this expected procession of glory, procession of glory, we humans are familiar with, God chooses instead to ride a gentle peasant animal. People were elated to hear that the long-awaited Messiah was finally in Jerusalem, and just in time for the Passover, no less. Perhaps this was the time when God will attack the Roman Empire with deadly vengeance, and the Jews will be liberated once more, just as it was in the original Passover, when the Israelites were freed from the bondage of slavery from the Egyptians. The people gathered around Jesus with palms, rejoicing and shouting, Hosanna! meaning, save us, and they greeted him like a king. However, it didn't take long for people to realize that this king did not act in the kingly ways they expected. A few days after this celebration, the cries of the people turned from Hosanna to crucify, from praise to condemnation. Fast forward to today, we sit on the cusp of Holy Week. We have the benefit, unlike the original followers of Christ, of knowing what happens next, or at least we think we do. But in any case, the church for millennia has held Holy Week to be the pinnacle week of the year. More important than any holiday, yes, even Christmas. We get the opportunity to relish the major events we just heard in the Passion narrative. We have whole liturgies based around them, and for many of us it will be heartbreaking to not be physically in the church to worship. And it will be physically, and it will also be equally heartbreaking to continue the fast from the Lord's Supper. How can we have Holy Week? like this, 
many of us have asked. Here we are, waving our palm trees at home, watching this. I have no idea if you have cried out, Hosanna! I'm up here being Mr. Rogers. But I do know that Christians around the globe are shouting, Hosanna! God save us. What a time to cry that message out. Hosanna indeed. But I want to make it clear, with or without the church gathering together Easter 2020, the church of heaven and earth will continue to cry out all the things that this week sums up in our Christian faith. Hosanna, as we do today on Palm Sunday. Who, me, Lord? As we discover on Monday, Thursday. Crucify, as we will hear on Good Friday, and Christ is risen, hallelujah, on Easter Sunday. This global pandemic cannot stop the beautiful mysteries that we witness in Holy Week. Thanks be to God whose good work and mighty grace can never be undone. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Together with the worldwide body of Christ, let us confess our Christian faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please respond to hear us, O God, with your mercy is great. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak, that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species. Be with those in California and Puerto Rico who have experienced earthquakes. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, Drive away fear and anger that cause us to turn against one another. Give courage and guidance to leaders to make decisions on behalf of your people. Bring peace and hope to those who are in prison and those who accompany them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, send your saving help to all those who suffer abuse, insult, or discrimination. Heal the wounded and those battling illnesses. Bring peace to those who suffer chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all those who cry out for relief. We pray for all those who are listed on our prayer list, list at Bethany and Pilgrim, and all those we will now name silently or loud. For these reasons, 
We ask that you continue to give financially, either by mailing your offering into the church office, or preferably, there is a way to give electronically through Simply Giving. There is information about this in your newsletters. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. Keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus Christ as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior. Lord, we long to be nurtured and fed around this table again. But we will keep the fast, unless it is under extreme circumstances, O God, until our church can come together once again. In the solemnity of Holy Week, we witness with the whole church on heaven and earth the mysteries of the passion of your Son and the Passover from death into life. Gather us around the cross of Christ and preserve us until the resurrection. Lord, you alone are our rock and our salvation. Therefore, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements. I am trying to set up Zoom in the sanctuary so you can join me in the sanctuary live for prayer every day at noon and 6 p.m. Sunday through Friday. With or without me, however, let us keep in solidarity with our parish as a whole these prayers of intercession, these suffrages during these trying times. Drop boxes are available at both Pilgrim and Bethany, and in them are all kinds of things. Hymnals, I can't keep stressing enough the importance of every family having their very own ELW, these uh, uh, cranberry hymnals. So please pick up a hymnal. Uh, in these drop boxes are also uh, coloring books for children, um, the Christian. Uh, magazines that we regularly uh, subscribe to, face mask cutouts, uh, and now, uh, most recently, we have our palms, which actually you already have, because you have them today with you here, but if you haven't picked them up, I'm sure we have extras. So, come and grab them. These drop boxes are also for dropping things off at the church, which uh, leads me to announce that as a parish, we have made and distributed over 450 face masks to our local community. I could not be more thankful to all of those who have played a vital role to this distribution, but I would like to thank especially Janelle Lindquist and Donna Chater, who have uh, been a big supporter of collecting these face masks. So please, when you um, see them, uh, and uh, give them a thank you. If you are feeling antsy at home and would like to help, please, and would like to help, please give the church a call. We are overloaded with tasks, and we could use your help, so please call your church office. Lastly, as we enter into Holy Week, we will be pre-recording the services. So please send a clip of you saying, Alleluia, Christ is risen, and Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia, to my pastor email. If you are interested in contributing in another way, like singing or reading, 
we would love that as well. It is clear that even though we are not able to gather together in body, that Christ is still with us, with you, and together we are a parish united for good in the North Woods. With that said, please accept God's blessing. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Almighty Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who blesses you now 